Hi there everyone, this is Leo from TechLine PCs, and in today's video, I'll be working on a trio of flips involving two different models of HP small 4-factor PCs, the Protesk 400G4 and the Elite Desk 800G3. And what we'll be doing today is equipping these with some upgraded memory, storage, and what might be the best single-slot low-profile graphic card that you could even fit into these kinds of builds, the Radeon RX 6400. But before we pop these cases open... This video is brought to you by us over at TechLinePCs.com, where you can check out our store for custom mid-range builds, along with our consolation page, where you can fill in whether you'd like an upgrade, a new build, a pre-built PC, along with a budget, and we'll work with you on the PC of your choice. Check us out again over at TechLinePCs.com. So let's go ahead and take a look at both of these HP small 4-factor PCs that I've got here. Now aesthetically, they look near identical, but obviously one is quite a bit thinner than the other. And it's mostly because there's one less PCI Express 1X and PCI Express 16X slot on the inside. Externally, they have essentially the same amount of USB ports, though the larger does have two headphone jacks up out in the front. However, for the sake of this video, we're mostly going to focus on the smaller ProDesk 400, as it's going to be the main reason that we went with the RX6400 hundreds with these builds. So let's get these first popped open so we can start throwing some parts in there and kind of go through the whole process of upgrading these small four-factor PCs step by step. Something I really do like about these cases is that they are a toolless design. We can simply unlock each of them from the back and pull off the top panel to have immediate access to everything that we need on the inside. For the ProDesk 400, we'll need to take off the plastic front panel by removing the four plastic clips down front and then pulling it off. Next, we press the switch over towards the side to release the cage that the hard drive would normally go into, as well as the DVD drive, which will now give us access to start placing parts on the inside of this PC. We don't have to worry about cooling or a processor, as this already came with an i5-8500 quad-core processor on the inside, so it's just going to be a memory, storage, and GPU update for this flip. First, we'll get the RAM inside. Just using a pair of 3200 MHz 8GB sticks for a total of 16 gigs running in dual channel popped into the appropriate slots. Next, we have a 1TB M.2 drive from MSI getting screwed right onto the motherboard itself, so we don't have to worry about any spinning disk drives or larger solid states. Lastly, we'll need to prep the slot a bit before we can pop in the GPU. We can unlock the expansion slot easily, but we'll need to break away the port by using a flathead screwdriver and a little bit of elbow grease to really force this thing out of there. Let's take a moment to talk about the star of the show, the RX 6400. When it comes to the low profiled field of GPUs, both Nvidia and AMD have somewhat left this field in the dust and Intel hasn't released anything in terms of ARC in this space, leaving my more affordable options to only be the RX 6400 and the Nvidia 1650. However, since I needed something that was single slot, required no external power, and was low profile, the RX 6400 became the default winner in this choice. The R6400 was released back in January 2022, sporting 4GB of GDDR6 video memory using the RDNA2 technology, and it is able to boost up to 2321 MHz of speed with a memory clock of 2000 MHz. Now, though it is capable of running ray tracing performance as it does come with RT cores, a whole total of 12 of them, this kind of makes the point irrelevant as anything that tries to run ray tracing on this card will cause it to explode. Now fortunately this is going to require no prep for us to get ready. It does come with the low profile bracket already pre-installed onto it, though it does come with a bracket for the full ready install if you need that inside of your case. And when it comes to output, it does come with a DisplayPort 1.4a port and an HDMI 2.1 port, which technically means this is capable of displaying 4K resolutions, but I wouldn't recommend doing anything above 1080p when it comes to gaming. And with a TDP of 53 watts, it only needs the juice that's pulled out of the PCI Express slot itself to power it on. And from that we'll do what is essentially the easiest GPU installation that we'll see ever on this channel. Just a simple slot into the card and then we lock the bracket into place. No external power, no screwing necessary. And that's all we really need to do to get a fully upgraded ProDesk 400. So I'm going to go ahead and close this up. However, before we get this plugged up and tested, let's just quickly do the same with the Elite Desk 800 while we're at it. 
It's going to be a very similar process in terms of opening up and upgrading. We're first going to pop open the front panel, which is going to be around the same. However, we're going to be folding down the drive cage this time around. 2.6 RAM right into the same slots, screwing the M.2 drive where it belongs. However, this is where things go just a little bit different. We don't have to break away anything out back to get the RX 6400 installed. It's just as simple as removing the metal cover and installing the card right in and we're off to the races. And with that, we've got ourselves an upgraded Elite Desk 800 ready to go. Up next, let's check out some benchmarks using the smaller ProDesk 400 to see what the RX 6400 combo can really dish out with these systems. We're going to start this one off with some esports titles since everyone loves seeing high frame rate in their games. 1080p, we're going to start off with Counter-Strike Global Offensive running the benchmark map that nets us an extremely playable 225 FPS in the highest settings. Truthfully, a build like this would be perfect at all levels of esports at 1080p. Next up, we're going to go with Apex Legends on 1080p high, running through the training map, which is also netting us 75 frames per second on average. With a fast-paced title like this, I'm sure you could tweak a couple of settings to get an even higher frame rate if you're using a higher fidelity monitor. Now off to my current time sync, Street Fighter 6, 1080p, high preset, we're running at a locked 60 frames per second in game, which is the general frame cap for this engine, meaning one of the top fighters out there is really ready to go with a build like this. And now we're going to go to some higher fidelity gameplay here, starting off with Tiny Tina's Wonderland, 1080p medium settings running the in-game benchmark tool, which is giving us a smooth and playable 63 frames per second. Great when you want to just do some looter shooting with some friends. Last game up is going to be a single player title that came out this year, the Resident Evil 4 2023 Remake. Ran this on the performance mode for a smooth 85 frames per second gameplay through the entire opening village sequence. Overall, I'm actually incredibly impressed with the kind of horsepower a card like this is sporting at this size. Though I am hopeful that one of the big three manufacturers might be able to put out a new low profile card in the future, especially with the power efficiency gains that we've seen from Nvidia with their 40 series graphics card, this might be the most that we'll see out of low profile PCs for quite a bit, as the ITX market will be the next big step up if you're looking for power in a small build. But that's going to be it for this video. Please check out our shop again over at techlinepcs.com for builds like this one, commissions, and consultations from us. This is Leo, signing out.